Let's talk about NBA betting picks for Wednesday. What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great day so far. We had a really good day on the channel yesterday. 3-0. Nice little clean sweep. Never going to catch me complaining about that. Needed because we did have an 0-3 day recently that kind of messed up our record a little bit. But now we're up to 15-8. and You can see we got good units, good, good ROI. Things are looking pretty good. And um, man, I just feel like I've got a really good beat on, on the NBA this season. Again, I know that it is a bit short-lived on the channel here, but as I so often do, I'll plug my stuff. Um, I write daily back basketball write-ups on WSN.com. With those, I am at 62.8% against the spread for the season so far, so making a lot of money. The picks yesterday, we had the Mavericks at plus 4.5 against the Cavaliers. The Mavericks should have won that game. Uh, Mavericks money line betters have to feel awful. From about 3.5 minutes left in the game, in the next 1 minute and 8 seconds, Max Struess made four threes, and then he made the second longest buzzer beater game-winning three in NBA history history to close it off. Uh, the, the Mavs absolutely should have won that game. Uh, the spread, I, it was kind of never in doubt. I mean, the Mavs were battling the, pretty much the whole game. In the fourth quarter, they took the big lead. Even if they did somehow lose that game, which did end up happening, I knew they were gonna, going to be able to cover. So good one from us there. We had the under in the Hawks-Jazz game. Once again, we said that the Hawks defense was going to drive that because despite how bad they've been this season, the fact that they no longer have Trey Young in the lineup means they're going to become more versatile defensively. Absolutely spot on there. We did nail that one. And then we had the New Orleans Pelicans at minus two and a half against the New York Knicks. Granted, got a little lucky because Jalen Brunson did not play in that game. Um, and the Knicks did keep it competitive for a while there. But even if Brunson does play, I still would have liked the, the Pelicans. I mean, that's why I picked them in the first place. And they end up winning by double digits. So shout out to New Orleans. You know, they get the job done for us there. Help us go 3-0. But guys, I've only got a couple of picks today. There's six games in the league. I'm going to be talking about two of them in this one. And before I jump into that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Like I've said so many times, coming out with betting picks pretty much every day. We've been winning a lot of them. You guys are doing yourself the favor by tuning in, and you're helping me out by subscribing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And yeah, let's go ahead and talk about these games. So the first game that I am going to talk about here is the game that, once again, I'm still waiting to get some feedback from the comment section. Do we add a lock pick or like a bonus pick where basically we just double down, we play that one for two units. Yesterday it was the Mavericks pick that would have that one ended up hitting, obviously. Um, I did not count it for twice in the record, just to be clear, because didn't officially say that I was going to, but if I were to have that two unit sort of play here, it would be the Sacramento Kings plus eight and a half against the Denver Nuggets. Now, before we jump into anything about this, De'Aaron Fox is questionable. There's the line opened, I believe it's seven and a half last night, went up to eight and a half today. That could be a reflection of him being questionable. Um, but even still, I would wait to see if he plays because if he does, you know, you're going to probably see the line move back to that seven and a half line, but you're also not going to be hosed if he doesn't play. I think he's going to play. He's got a knee contusion. Uh, really the only main player for either one of these teams that's on the injury report. But okay, let's actually jump in and talk about this matchup here. So I know the Kings are seventh right now in the Western Conference. If you load up the standings, yesterday they were fifth, and they've been pretty much that top five, top six seed the entire season. It's easy to forget about them because they were third last year, and that seemed like the flash in the pan, and the top four seeds in the West have separated themselves pretty much since the jump this season. But Sacramento's been a really good basketball team, okay? I don't want that to be lost on anybody. They actually have a better net rating on the road than they do at home, so they're able to take their show on the road. And despite not being a defensive-minded team. They're top 10 in defensive, uh, defensive efficiency when they are on the road. Also three games above 500 again on the road. So they've been a really good team. They're 52% against the spread overall, 62.5% when they are a road underdog. So that is significant. Um, they are coming off of a pretty inexcusable home loss to the Miami Heat. They were favored by seven and a half. They lost by 11. Um, but here on the channel, we did have the Heat. So again, another pick that we nailed. But I like the Kings to bounce back here. I mean, I think Mike Brown's going to be absolutely ripping into these guys. And with good reason, <laughs> absolutely. Um, they're taking on the Nuggets, who are 44.5% against the spread. That is the sixth lowest mark in the league. They're also just 13-13-1 as a home favorite. So they've not been profitable. Um, they haven't been winners or losers technically, but they haven't been profitable. They covered in three straight games, but only in seven of their last 18. And this is the kicker. The Nuggets are 0-3 against the spread and 0-3 straight up 
against the Kings this season. That's right, Sacramento has won all of those games, two of them coming in the month of February. So they have seen this team recently. With that being said, it is tough to beat a team so many times consecutively, but the Kings, even if they don't win this game, I feel like they're going to be able to cover because they have found success against them. But let's jump into some more numbers here. So I talked about Sacramento being better on the road than they are at home. Um, they're only shooting 35.8% from three outside of their building, which is a couple points below their season average. That being said, they are shooting above 40% from long range in the three games since the All-Star break. De'Aaron Fox and Malik, Month, Malik Monk have both been really good, and they both offer threats that the Nuggets are going to struggle to deal with. And, and I want to jump into this because it is really interesting. So... Denver actually does do a pretty good job defending the pick and roll. They allow the fifth fewest points per possession when the ball handler keeps the rock. So when Deeran, uh, Deeran Fox and Malik Monk are flying downhill, Denver normally does a good job defending that. However, Denver, while allowing the fifth fewest, fifth fewest, there's a tongue twister, fifth fewest points per possession when the pick and roll ball handler keeps the ball, they allow the fourth most points per possession on the pick and roll when the roll man gets the ball. So if they can, if they're able to successfully feed DeMontis Sabonis or a Keegan Murray or whoever it is, that usually leads to success. And part of that is, is picking on Jokic, who's not been a bad defender this season. I know he gets a lot, a lot of stigma and catches a lot of crap for it. He's not been a bad defender, but he is not the best one-on-one -on -one defender in the world in the post. And Denver also gives up the fourth most points per possession involving dribble handoffs. So that's something that I think you you could, you could see Sacramento really look and lean into with the speed that Monk and Fox have. Also, their ability to finish at the rim and create plays, um, you know, kick, kick outs to the corner, swing, swing. Now we've got an open three, stuff like that. I just feel like their style of play really presents problems for Denver. And that's reflected in some of the results that we've seen this season. You know, styles make fights and the Kings style, for whatever reason, just matches up pretty well against Denver. Some of the Sacramento players have also been playing really well lately. DeMontis Sabonis, in the month of February, he first of all, he has a double-double in 40 straight games and a triple-double in 8 of his last 10, which is ridiculous. In the month of February, he's averaging 20.6 points, 14 rebounds, 10.5 assists. Um, he's also He also averaged 22 points, 14 rebounds, and 7 assists in 6 matchups against Nikola Jokic since he was traded to the Sacramento Kings. So... Bottom line is you can probably count on him to have a strong night here. And again, going back to some of Denver's struggles, defending the handoff and defending the role, man, could be a reason to look at him in this one. De'Aaron Fox did have that cold streak uh, somewhat recently, but over his last five games, he scored 27 plus in all of them and averaged 32 during that span. For the month of February, averaging 27 points, five and a half assists, four rebounds. So he's been pretty good. Sacramento's good in the clutch time. They, are, they have a plus seven point differential per 100 possessions in the clutch um that's only 12th in the league but you know if you're positive down the clutch in the clutch and you've got a top 10 defense on the road then you know you can get some things done here denver is the third best home team as far as net rating goes they've got a home net rating of plus 9.9 .9. on top of having you know their their talented experienced roster they also lead the league in assist to turnover ratio in their building which i think speaks to some of their chemistry and continuity and just understanding that they have with one another but as i've said you know even though denver is a great team they have shown some chinks in the armor with their defensive styles and that's that's despite denver being a much improved defensive team this season they're top 10 in defensive efficiency yet you've still seen that comeback to bite them which i do find quite interesting um, although that the Nuggets did win all three of their post all-star break games by a wide margin, average margin of victory of 17 points, shooting only 32% from three. If Sacramento can get it going, then it might be a little difficult for Denver to keep up in this one. Um, Jamal Murray only played one game against the Kings this season, had just 12 points and three assists to go with six turnovers, averaging only 17 points in February, although he did score 27 his last game against the Warriors. Nikola Jokic had a bit of a mixed bag in these matchups with Sacramento. Um, his best game, he had 36 points, 14 assists, 13 rebounds, but he also had a 15, 8, and 5 game. And that was the most recent game against the Kings on February 14th, so exactly two weeks ago. Um, the bottom line here is I think the Kings can win this game. You know, Denver's 22 and 5 at home, so I wouldn't necessarily say that it is likely, but with the line at plus 8.5, even plus 7.5 if Fox is ruled in, 
I think the Kings can absolutely cover that. I think they've put enough on tape, um, you know, with the advanced numbers and the results to make you believe that. So Sacramento Kings plus eight and a half against the Nuggets. That's my first pick of the day. And then my second pick, and guys, I feel almost a little bit guilty here because this is like their fifth or sixth straight game that I've picked them, but I'm taking the Dallas Mavericks. I'm, I'm taking the Dallas Mavericks at minus two and a half on the road against the Toronto Raptors in this one. As I'm recording this, nothing major on the injury report. Um, I don't know if the odds makers know something that I and we don't, and that's why the line is, is where it's at, but... You know, Dallas is, has been really impressive. And again, I know that they lost last night, but they were in firm control of that game. Max Struess did something that I've never seen before in basketball. Again, four threes in a minute and eight second, a minute and eight seconds, and then a fifth three, which ends up being the second longest buzzer beater game. Where I've, I've truly never seen anything like that before. They would have won that game. And even with that loss, if you want to look at the team's performances since they made the trade acquisitions of P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford, well, as far as net rating, they're sixth. Defensive rating, their eighth. Offensive rating, their fifth. So they are a very, very good team. And I actually want to check what their rebound rate is too um, because I don't expect it to be great, but I expect it to be better than it was. They were, I think they were the worst rebounding team in the league. Now they're 18th. So you're seeing improvements pretty much across the board here, shooting 38% from three during that time. They've got a lot of things going for them. You know, I, I've said it numerous times. This is the team that I expect to really take off in the second half of the season. Luca put up 45, 12 and nine, I believe either 14 and nine or 12 and nine. Um, but he was, he was brilliant last night. Him and Kyrie both putting up crazy numbers shooting better than 40% from three for the month. And I know that some people might be worried about Luca on the second night of a back-to-back -back because conditioning is kind of a question with him, but he's actually been pretty good. His last back-to-back -back was on February 6th. He had 35 points, 18 rebounds, nine assists. Um, before that, he also had a triple double. That was on January 27th. He had 28 points, 17 assists, 10 rebounds. So I think you can count on this guy to go in there and, and get a job done for you. I mean, it's Luka Doncic we're talking about. As far as the Raptors go, you know, credit to them. I faded them when they played the Pacers. I had the Pacers minus six. Toronto won by eight outright. Really good win for them. One of their best wins of the season. But that being said, I'm not buying into this three-game win streak being a marker that they've turned their season around. You know, the Pacers win was a great win, but they also beat the Brooklyn Nets, who are just god-awful, and they beat the Atlanta Hawks. And, and Trey Young played in that game, but shot 30% from the field, and at some point during that game, tore a ligament in his finger, which is now going to keep him out for a month. So he was playing but not really playing. He was almost like a double agent working for the Raptors without even knowing it. So do I trust the Raptors to win this game or keep it within two points, even though they are at home? No, I don't. I think Dallas is a far superior team. And I think they're an angry team too. I, I, I think they're angry about that loss. Um, there's, there's no way they deserved one last night. And I think they're looking at this, this schedule here, this part of the schedule, knowing that they've got to go back and battle the Western conference, which is so loaded. They say, okay, we really need to pick up a win here. So second pick of two picks today Dallas Mavericks minus two and a half that that's what I like guys only two picks like I said short and simple um but we've been making some money on the channel so far hopefully we can continue that today with a two and oh day that's gonna do it for me here guys before I get on out of here though and before you get on out of here please get in the comment section let me know do you want to see that special bonus two unit play do you want to see it added to the record um I'll figure out some way to distinguish it from the other picks but yeah let me know what your thoughts on that are let me know what your favorite plays of the day are for Wednesday. Like the video if you did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I post. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a great day.